Good evening, and welcome to another edition of the Yuba Sutter Medical Explorer. My name is Dr. Robert Peppercorn, and my specialty is dermatology. I serve as host of this program. The purpose of the Medical Explorer is to explore the medical communities of Yuba and Sutter counties, and to take you behind the scenes of medical care practices in our local area. We have a very interesting program for you tonight as we explore a new area of medicine for the Yuba Sutter area. Tonight, the Medical Explorer will introduce you to the fascinating field of radiation oncology. This is the field of medicine that uses x-rays to destroy cancer. I know that I've been looking forward to seeing these new facilities for this work in Yuba City, and I know that you will find it to be quite interesting. We will also meet a doctor who has devoted his career to the treatment of cancer using modern tools of x-ray therapy. Before getting to our topic tonight, let's take a look at the latest medical news. An experimental drug successfully has dissolved the clots that block blood flow to the heart during a heart attack. The finding has been called a true medical breakthrough. The finding could revolutionize the treatment of heart attacks, stroke, and medical conditions in which blood clots are involved, according to doctors at the Johns Hopkins Medical School. The new drug dissolves clots rapidly and effectively without side effects, helping save the heart from permanent damage. In the future, paramedics may carry the drug for emergency use. Blood clots, which form around fat deposits in major arteries to the heart, cause about 80 to 85 percent of heart attacks. They shut off the supply of blood and oxygen to the heart muscle. Dissolving the, 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 dissolving the clot can mean the difference between a minor heart attack followed by full recovery and severe damage to the heart that decreases chances for recovery. The drug, called Tissue Plasminogen Activator, or TPA, is a genetically engineered artificial version of an enzyme found normally in very small amounts in the body. There is not enough natural TPA in the body to dissolve a clot. So doctors, as soon as possible after a heart attack has occurred, inject 200 to 300 times the amount normally present in the blood. TPA faces further study before it is approved for general use, a process taking at least another year. My next medical news story concerns the feeding of newborn babies. Breastfed infants in the United States are not significantly healthier than bottle-fed ones, according to a new government report. Results of the report, based on a review of dozens of studies worldwide by an independent expert panel, were recently released by the American Public Health Association. These results seem to contradict popular belief. A representative of the National Center of Health Statistics stated that there's no clear-cut evidence that breastfeeding confers significant health benefits on infants. However, breastfed infants do enjoy some benefits, the report says. Such, such babies are significantly less likely to suffer stomach upsets and minor gastrointestinal infections. Breastfed infants are slightly less likely to, de to develop asthma later in life, but not less likely to have allergies. They are slightly less likely to be overweight for their age than bottle-fed infants, and slightly less likely to get ear infections. Breast and bottle-fed infants had equal rates of growth and development. The notion that breastfeeding enhances mother-infant bonding, and thus is psychologically healthier for infants, was also seriously questioned in the report. The scientists stated that if a baby is well-fed, well-loved, and well-cared for, it doesn't really seem to matter if it's breast or bottle-fed. My final medical news story concerns George Washington's teeth. According to a researcher at UCLA, George Washington's false teeth were probably made of lead and not wood. He stated that dark stains from coffee, tea, tobacco, and red wine, coupled with the dark color of the lead, which were made in those dentures, were probably responsible for the misconception that his false teeth were made of wood. The scientists stated that his teeth were probably of good quality and that George Washington probably lost most of his teeth from gum and jawbone disease rather than from tooth decay. Now let's leave the world of George Washington and get on with our 20th century medical explorer. Most of us are familiar with the use of x-ray machines to take pictures of diseases inside the body. We are also, of course, familiar and used to hearing about the dangers of x-rays, such as those from old atomic bomb tests or leaking nuclear reactors. 
But did you know that x-rays can be used as a beneficial weapon to destroy cancer? For the first time in the history of medicine in the Yuba Center area, facilities and medical specialists are now available locally who can use special x-ray machines to fight cancer. Let's leave our Medical Explorer studio now and visit the new Radiation Oncology Center on Plymouth Street in Yuba City, one block north of the Fremont Hospital. North Plymouth Street is where I'm standing right now, about a block and a half north of the Fremont Medical Center, across the street from the Driftwood Convalescent Hospital. Someday I foresee this area becoming a major medical complex, perhaps outdoing the medical facilities now available in Yuba City. Behind me, they're constructing some additional medical facilities. And right next to me, here on the left, is the new Radiation Oncology Center for Yuba City. Been planned for many months. Let's head inside now and see the new radiation facilities. Hi. Hello. I'm Dr. Peppercorn from the Medical Explorer. I'm trying to see uh, Dr. Baird today. He's expecting me. Okay, I'll tell him you will. Thank you. Hi. I'm Mike Baird. Nice to meet you, Mike. I'm really interested in seeing your facilities here today, and I'd like to just start out by having you show us where are we right now. Okay, well right now, this is our, uh, our main waiting room. This is where the patients will come in and sit uh, before they're seen and before they have their treatments. So just like any doctor's just office. Just like any other doctor's office, this is a place where you spend most of your time, right? So there's always the mystery of the radiation treatments and how that might be different from a regular doctor's office. I think most people would realize after once or twice that it's very similar to a visit to a regular doctor's office. Great, well what I'd like to see now is what happens with a patient after they're in this room where they'd actually be examined by you. Okay, if you come with me. Okay. I really like this office. Having just moved into a new office myself, I can really see the advantages of all this space you've got here. How big is this office? Uh, the office is about uh, 2,900 square feet. So that's pretty big. It's pretty big, but a lot of the space is used in the uh, treatment room. We'll, we'll get over yeah. to there later. Right. Well, so far, the room looks like any typical medical examination room. What will actually go on in here? Okay, well, we have three examination rooms, uh, and in, in addition to treating patients, of course, we're active in their diagnosis and their, and their follow-up. So all of the initial consultation when we see the patient for the first time uh, is done in an examining room. While they're undergoing treatment, they're examined during their treatment course to be sure that everything is going the way it should be. And then after they're through, we maintain follow-up with the patients uh, for as long as they're around. Uh, if they move out of the area, we'll transfer their care to somebody else. So an example, let's say a patient, on, uh, after some terrible misfortune, discovers they have a cancer mm -hmm. that needs to be treated with your methods. We'll certainly discuss this in more detail later. The patient would come here probably being referred by their general doctor. Right. right. We really do not encourage self-referrals. In fact, uh, we don't go so far as to say we won't see patients unless they're referred, but we uh, certainly prefer every patient having uh, a family physician or another primary care physician. Uh, our role here is primarily a, a specialty type role where we're, we're interested in giving a specific type of treatment. Well, I would certainly encourage patients to, if they are already undergoing radiation therapy, to consider asking their doctor why they're not being sent to Yuba City rather than being sent somewhere else. I know you don't want to get into the political <laughs> hassles of that, but I certainly would encourage them to ask why not getting local care when it's now going to be available here. Right. So a patient would come in, get examined, uh, an evaluation takes place. I assume that could take more than an hour different the, Usually it takes about an hour to two hours for the initial evaluation, right? And we'll, you'll see when we go in the office, that's where usually where we start off. We sit down, discuss their medical history, uh, not only the present problem, but anything else in the past. And then they come back here and we'll do a, a physical exam. At the close of that, we usually go back in the office and sit down and discuss really what the diagnosis means. People with cancer are very concerned as to what this really means, um, what are their chances for cure, what are their chances for leading a normal life. And we spend a lot of time talking to people about those aspects. Well, let's head over to your office area right now and see that facility. Certainly. Again, a beautiful office. I am so jealous. Well, as you can see, we're just getting started, and we don't have much in the way of pictures or anything on the wall, but uh, 
Space is always something that if you don't have the proper amount of it, you're always wishing you had more. So we built this big enough so that it should accommodate us for the next few years. You'll least. probably have room for several physicians here. Well, we actually, we have two offices, two uh, physician offices. Since radiation therapy depends a lot on uh, physics support, we have right now our physicist is using one of those uh, rooms to uh, spend a lot of time with the machine to be sure that it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. After he is not on site quite as often, uh, we plan to have uh, perhaps a medical oncologist who will be coming up on an occasional basis uh, to use the office space until such time as a medical oncologist decides to come into the area. Well, we certainly could use a doctor of that specialty in this area. Right. And since radiation and medical oncology are very allied, we certainly are waiting for this to... Right. I should explain that medical oncology refers to the type of doctor who would treat cancer using medical techniques such as chemotherapy... That's right. ...and direct treatment, basically. That's correct, right. Well, a patient then has been evaluated in the exam room. You've discussed their possible treatment here in your office. Let's say we're ready for treatment. They don't just go right to that machine and start getting zapped with the machine. They have to have certain measurements done and things like that. What goes on? Okay, well, what happens there is that there's a very complex process called treatment planning. Uh, it may not seem all that complex to the patient, but uh, in terms of mathematics and physics, it's quite complicated. It requires special equipment, a machine called a simulator and a whole computer system called a treatment planning computer. Now, in a center of this size, it's economically not feasible to have the state-of-the-art equipment. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize our treatment planning facilities up in Chico. So patients will go to Chico at least once? They'll go to Chico for the first day, right. And at that time, we spend about an hour and a half in Chico uh, and uh, take the special x-rays that are necessary, do the special measurements. And then after we have everything planned out and run through the computers, then they'll come back down uh, to Yuba City and start their treatments, usually the next day. So when these special machines that we'll see in a minute are actually aimed at a patient, it's done very, very scientifically. Yes, it's very, very carefully done. The, uh, between the treatment planning films that are done on the simulator and the computer printouts, we have basically a map of the radiation as it goes through the patient's body, and we can determine dosages in such a way that we give the maximum amount of radiation to the tumor and the minimum amount of radiation to the rest of them, which is a very important topic. Uh, exactly. <laughs> well, I'd like to see that machine now. I've been hearing a lot about it, so why don't we head over there? Sure. Well, I already see some fantastically modern-looking equipment here, even a TV set. We all like seeing TV sets. Now, is that so you can watch TV during the workday? <laughs> no, actually, as you can see, that's not really uh, the Muppets. That's uh, the inside of the treatment room. Because oh, so. of the fact that nobody can be in the room except the patient when the treatments are on, and the fact that the walls are three to five feet thick, there has to be some way of being able to monitor a patient while they're having their treatments. So there's an intercom system so we can hear the patients, and we also have a closed-circuit TV system so that we can watch them. So you have constant monitoring of the patient. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even though you may be physically by yourself in the room, you're not alone. Uh, the uh, linear accelerator is a high-energy X-ray unit, and uh, you have to be able to tell it what you want it to do. So you can dial in the amount of radiation that's necessary you can also set the angles of the machine and there are certain various interlocks built into it so you can't make a mistake and uh, this is uh, similar to uh, what a pilot in an airplane would do to make sure he gets up and gets down you have to put everything in here and then from that point on you push a button and it's pretty much automatic so I'm sure when you go home at night you'll be taking that key and I see the little key there so if someone would ever get in here at night they couldn't start zapping people with the x-rays oh, that's definitely true the key is always pulled out and the machine is always put on standby so that it can't be run unless you know how to start it up every day and have the key. Well, I really want to see this machine now. I've been looking forward to this for a long time, so let's head into the room. Okay, fine. Come on. Now, look at this machine. Well, it's fantastic. I wish I knew what it did. Why don't you tell us? Well, uh, this is a 4 million volt linear accelerator, and actually, uh, over here we have Dr. Phil Hines. Hi, nice to meet you. Dr. Hines is our physicist, part of our group, and he probably could explain it as well or better than I can, so maybe we'll ask him a few questions. This is a uh, 4 million volt linear accelerator that produces very high energy x-rays to treat our cancer patients. The unit is a gantry, what we call a gantry, and the x-rays come out here and we can rotate this gantry around our patient during our patient's treatment. 
we can also vary the size of the radiation field by flipping one of these switches and reading the dials on either side. We also right now are in the, the installation phase of our project here and we have a what looks like a fish tank which we use to simulate our patient to acquire all of the data that we need to put into our computer for our treatment planning. And that's what we're in right now. So the patient actually lies down on this table just like any x-ray machine. That's correct. And right now that's what our water tank is doing which is simulating our patient. So as an example if someone had a brain tumor that had to be treated by x-ray, I don't even know if that's done. Yes, but, it is. Okay. And they're lying, they could just be lying here on their back and the machine could just be aimed right at their head here. That's correct. Or if we were treating uh, cancer of the prostate or bladder, uh, in that case the patient also would be laying here, but in that case the, pa the machine would rotate about the patient, focusing the radiation in on the area that we need to be treated. Would it actually give that treatment as it's moving? Like yes, it a, would. I've heard of something called a tomogram where the machine, an x-ray machine will take pictures of all, at all different angles constantly. I can just imagine it must be the same idea. It's the same general principle, yes. Well, Dr. Baird, I'm really curious to know how much something like this costs. Well, this machine costs in the neighborhood of $250,000. Quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, plus the uh, special construction of the room, which probably is about the same cost by the time you build a room of the dimensions with all the concrete and everything that's necessary for the shielding. Now that wall behind you, I remember when they were pouring that wall and I could watch outside, it seemed like five or six feet of concrete. Is that true? Yeah, this wall is about five feet thick. This, as you notice on the machine over here, uh, the, the radiation comes out of the head uh, and then strikes the floor. Well, when the machine is tilted sideways, there has to be an extra layer of concrete right in the direct path of that primary beam. So right in this area, the walls are five feet thick. El elsewhere, they're not quite as thick. They're around three feet. So when I walk down the sidewalk or drive home on Plumas Street, I don't have to worry about x-rays zapping my car. No, there won't be anything coming out of the building. I hope not. <laughs> well, we're pretty sure. <laughs> we're well, I understand that the architects have to go through very stringent uh, governmental approvals and things like that before that this is even built. That's correct. And not only that, but uh, after the, uh, the machine is installed, uh, Dr. Hines will stand outside the, the building with a survey meter and, and take actual physical measurements to be sure that the, the calculated uh, results are happening so that there is no real radiation exposure. Nothing is left to chance. Well, you know, I work in this building, too, so I'm not going to let anything leak. That's